Holy heart failure, Batman, it's the boys. How is it possible for a show to be this good? The show makes me laugh, makes me angry, disgusted, curious. I go through the entire spectrum of emotions in just eight episodes, 16 if you've seen both seasons. Similar to The Walking Dead, we've got a critically acclaimed show based off a pretty violent graphic novel. It's exclusive to Amazon Prime, so if you aren't the millions of Americans that have a Prime membership because you love drones dropping packages on your doorstep, you'll have to scoop up a month of Prime to watch this one. Prime has some solid content that'll keep you entertained, so it's worth it, at least for a little while. Simply put, The Boys is the antithesis to the entire superhero genre. It's the Deadpool movies, but with a grittier human element. Hilariously, you have to ask yourself, how could it get grittier than Deadpool salami slicing limbs like a deli? But it does. The Boys is a psychological thriller, a satire comedy, and an action series all bundled together. The action draws you in. That's what hooks you in the trailers. The satire, the entire superhero genre makes you laugh, and the thriller aspect engages you. The combination of these three elements make for two stellar seasons of television with a third on the way. But we've seen this before, right? This isn't anything new. We've got two kick-ass movies, Brightburn, the DC animated universe. What makes the boys so different? Humanity. In the majority of the superhero genre, even for the ones who don't have actual superpowers, the heroes or villains are referred to as gods in some sort of context. The Justice League literally sits above the Earth in a high-tech space station with an ion cannon on it, no less. The Avengers, pre-Sokovia Accords, operate on their own accord and intentions. We've seen both teams tackle this complex situation in their own way, but often it comes down to the heroes acting independently, but always providing checks and balances for themselves and others for the betterment of mankind. The Boys does not offer this blind ideology of the betterment of mankind for their so-called heroes. The Boys explores the true humanity of those who are gifted. Similar to real life, what we see on the surface does not translate to what's on the inside of a person. The Boys allows us to explore values not often associated with the legendary heroes of our time. Homelander's character is in a detailed synopsis similar to a Kryptonian child we might compare him to, but it is a question. What happens if the strongest superpowered being of all time is a hedonistic, emotionally broken, mentally unstable man? There is more fear packed in that sentence than the entirety of the movie Brightburn. We have a hard time relating to superheroes unless they are down to earth to some extent. Simply put, they don't know what it's like to be human anymore. But what happens when you create a bunch of superheroes that don't have that blind ideology for the betterment of mankind? The answer to that question is that you get the worst. You get the absolute worst of mankind. The greed, the hedonism, the apathy of human life. The Boys is a thriller because you're always guessing what will happen next. Not simply in an advance the plot kind of manner, but you're waiting for Homeland or someone else to snap. You can feel the tensions boiling and you feel absolutely helpless watching characters like Huey have a run in with A-Train. Will A-Train just run through someone again? Will Homelander actually just lose it one day and actually laser a crowd of protesters? How many times in an attempt to save the day has someone died as a result of the apathy these heroes have? Similar to all the other superhero franchises, the heroes and the boys are revered as gods, but from the viewer's perspective it is not benevolence, it's malevolence. But what makes it so shocking and gripping is that it's based on human values and traits. This isn't some sort of universal, evil, higher power darkness that you can't understand. And I'm talking to you, dark side, with your stupid anti-life equation that still confuses me to this day. And it's not that I just want to see the world burn kind of mentality either. Talking to you, every single joker. The boys simply put beings with bad morals or lack thereof mixed in with various kinds of hedonistic values and greed and it allows it to manifest naturally. The thing that separates the soups from normal people are the powers. Imagine if Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos had superpowers. How much do you trust them personally? Who is really there to keep them in check? And unless they have a track record of being overly peaceful, do you really think the ideology of the betterment of humankind will dominate their day-to-day -day activities? If it did, would they be billionaires? With every character, you get varying degrees of that worst humanity in each hero. In Homelander, it's easily the worst and most visible, but it exists with every character. 
It's A-Train running through Kiwi's girlfriend with no legal repercussions outside of a handshake. It's the Deep not only being a womanizer, but also a sexual predator. It's the guy in the hero support group talking about how a soup froze and broke off his baby maker. Do you think that soup paid legally or monetarily for that? Do you think that soup moved on to the next sexual victim? Season 3 of the show with the introduction of the Teenage Kicks will probably give you that answer. The worst thing about The Boys is that it's only 8 episodes long per season. I haven't even dove into the direction of the story or the character development, but I can tell you that it's very worthwhile. It's not perfect, what is, but The Boys is never boring, there's not a character that I could do without. It allows itself to stay focused on one central plot, which is basically what I've already described, the whole malevolent gods thing, but it does this while exploring smaller stories to give you different parts of the picture. Huey and Butcher are getting to the bottom of their respective significant others' deaths, the boys keeping the soups in check, Vought not only creating superheroes but monopolizing the market, Soups attempting to infiltrate the United States government, Homelander attempting to raise his half-human, half-super son. Personally, I don't like to rate any type of media before it's had its entire run, so I'll hold off on an out of 10 score for now, but The Boys is definitely one of the best shows out there. I dislike waiting a week to watch an episode of a television show, but I'll be watching season three week to week. It's similar to WandaVision. Thanks for joining me on Black Man's Law. I'll see you guys next time.